Hi everyone! So today I wanted to give you all an introduction, an explanation to one of the main projects I'm working on these days. And I'm calling it the Purple Buckskin Project! Purple Buckskin Project! So what it is, is a project to try to create um, natural, bright purple dyed buckskins, spray and tan style smoked buckskins and specifically with wild lichens, specifically with the old-fashioned aged urine method of dyeing with lichens. So that's the project. And I started tinkering with this project about four years ago in 2016. I, you know, hatched the idea of like, oh my god, I think I discovered that lichen dyes existed. I was like, oh my god, purple buckskins. And of course I was thinking about other bright colored buckskins and certainly still want to do indigo buckskin and stuff like that, which many other amazing folks do. Um, but for me, I really latched onto the ancient urine dyes and I've been pretty latched onto it for about four years now. Um, in the beginning, I just went about it haphazardly and jumped in like I tend to do with a lot of my projects. Just jump in, like read a little bit of what I can read and if there's not enough for me I just jump in that's kind of what I tend to do <laughs> with topics where there's just not there's just not a lot of published information so in 2016 you know I just started peeing in jars all day long peeing 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 saving them it was summertime collecting random lichens all over the place not knowing if they were dye lichens or not shoving them into jars of pee putting lids on leaving lids off leaving them all about the place for days and weeks and uh, pretty much got nowhere. You know, of course, if you have tried lichen dyes or heard of them, they are notoriously tricky. They're notoriously difficult dye projects to do, and I didn't know that at the time. So, um, this project has evolved over the years. It started out with just like a little bit of tinkering uh, and then failure. You know, I quickly realized, oh, I'm not getting any bright colors within a day or two or a week or two or three. And I sort of stepped back and asked anybody I knew and could, any of my, you know, freaky, weirdo, craftspeople, friends, tanners, and dyers, and natural dyers, all the natural dyers that I knew, um, tried to research, find writings about natural dye, natural urine dyes, uh, and didn't really get anywhere for a few years, to be honest. It's not like I was working on it full time, which is one of my many little side projects in the back of my brain. Um, but I was really surprised, I have to admit, that even among natural dyers that I knew, a lot of the feedback and answers I was getting from people were things like, oh, don't even bother trying the urine thing, it doesn't work, it's too difficult, or it just smells awful, trust me, don't even try it, it's not worth it. Just buy the ammonia, buy the ingredients that you need for natural dyes. It's effective, it works, uh, just don't bother with the crazy urine stuff. Um, and just FYI, buying store-bought ammonia product is how you typically make urine uh, lichen dyes. So instead of a, you know an infusion in water, you need ammonia to get this reaction process to happen with dye lichens. Um, so I just was not very happy with those responses. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. Like, um, if, you know, I'll just say now, if you're uncomfortable, like, working with urine and foul urine and rancid urine, if that smell bothers you or if handling that, then, like, no, this isn't for you. But if that's the case, then tanning is not for you. Like, if you're up to your elbows and blood and guts and, you know, pushing poop out of intestines and, you know, eating fox meat, which smells crazy, um, you know, the smell of pee is, is a pretty PC compared to all of this stuff. So for me, I'm shocked that that's a hindrance to people. Um, even aged urine, I will tell you, like, yeah, it smells funky, but... Ammonia smells like shit. Ammonia is strong, disgusting smelling stuff. So aged urine to me is it's not any better or worse. Um, and in a weird way I actually enjoy it. So right off the bat, I'm just gonna tell everyone now 
that I fully encourage you to try this, to jump in on this project if it appeals to you. If you've been wanting to get into urine lichen dyes and have been dissuaded or discouraged, I'm telling you, I give you 10,000 thumbs up to jump into this if you want to. It's a lot of fun. It's taken me a long time to get the hang of. Um, but I love it and I have a lot of excitement about this method. Um, and there's other people out there who do it. You know, certainly, God knows, not the only person out there doing this. So, this project really started um, about four years ago when I visited a friend of mine named Louise Wheatley, who's a master fiber artist here in the Maryland area. Those of you who have been in my in-person classes before, you probably know that I use any excuse possible to talk about Louise all the time because she's one of my favorite humans. To me, she's one of the most inspiring humans on the planet. Um, she is, you know, I consider her a master fiber artist. She's in her 70s. She's got an enormous studio full of looms and projects and dye projects and stacks of dog bane stalks to process and cotton that she grows in her gardens and spins all by hand and weaves everything by hand and dyes everything by hand and she grows woad and she's incredibly inspiring. So about four years ago um, I was visiting her studio and she pulls out her purple lichen dyes. And this is the jar that she gave me at the time that she makes with ammonia. Um, and this is I, my understanding from her is that it's um, the lichen. I, I call it umbicularia, but I think it's, uh, I always say it wrong. I'm just going to say umbicularia. It's a type of umbicularia lichen. It's a bright purple solution. It's one that she had tended. Uh, on the jar it says November 2015. She gave this to me in sometime in 2016, I think. I think. Unless it was 2017. Um, and I did a bunch of sample buckskins with her at her house and she poured this out and she added water, actually diluted it in water, put it in a big pot on the stove and uh, simmered it because she's used to dyeing fabric. So we kind of simmered. Um, I think before I realized what was happening, I realized like, oh no, gosh, it's simmering. We can't, you know, if you know anything about buckskin, you can't boil or really simmer buckskin to dye it. You gotta do it at room temperature. Because if you cook natural leather, it turns into something called cooked leather or boiled leather, which gets very hard and stiff and brittle. It really changes ir irreparably. Um, but at the time, you know, we got amazing results, amazing results. And these are some of the samples from that time. camera can pick up on those colors. There's a piece of buckskin, bright purple, in fact. Some other samples. Come on, camera. So it really is quite, quite, quite shockingly purple. And I'll post photos of these so you can see them up close. Camera. So to me it was a great success. Part of the issue at the time though was that after we took out many of the samples and dried them, they still dried bright purple. Some of them dried very, very stiff, like this piece. Um, this piece is very soft, just like buckskin. This piece is very stiff. And at the time I thought, oh, it's because we simmered it. So it cooked a little bit and it became what's called boiled leather. Which, which does tighten and stiffen up a little bit. I was like, oh, that's not a problem. In the future, I just won't simmer it. And that is still one of the issues that I'm actually still encountering. I'll talk about that later. So, um, you know, fast forward to 2019, I came back to the Baltimore area and Thank goodness, my saving grace, I went out to some local river bottoms here in Maryland with someone I consider a, I call her the mushroom queen, <laughs> um, but who I consider one of the amazing, amazing 
fungi people of the mid-Atlantic area here. Hi everyone! If you are enjoying this topic, if this is something that's of interest to you, um, this full video, I think it's about a 50 or almost an hour long video, is on my Patreon, patreon.com slash storms of daylight. Um, and these longer processed videos right now are available to the $10 tier patrons on Patreon. Um, so if you want to head over there, check it out. Um, these videos are a lot of work and a lot of hours to create. Um, so that really helps a lot to um, help me make these videos possible. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.